Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo, and today, I'm gaming on Starlink Internet. What's it like? Let's find out. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. For the past six months, I've been testing games on Starlink Internet, and the results have varied game to game and month to month. When I first got Starlink, playing some FPS games like Apex, Modern Warfare, Rainbow Six Siege, and Fortnite was just impossible due to the dips. And what I mean by dips is sometimes the internet will be really good for uploading and it'll be 10 megabytes or be 20 megabytes. And sometimes it dips down to 13 kilobytes. That has a little bit of problem when you're playing FPS games because it pings your position and you require upload for pinging your position to the server. So that's where I come into issues. That's why some games vary because in RTS games, I didn't notice and a lot of slow paced games, I didn't notice as much as FPS games. Sometimes the dips did go low enough to lose connections. But six months ago, I was not too impressed with spending over a thousand dollars in hardware and equipment just to find out that it was not good enough to game FPS games on. And there was no chance of streaming. The connection was just way too unstable. Couldn't play game and I had a hard time streaming and playing games. And even if I'm playing a game and I have a stream on, the upload it requires to ping to the server, sometimes it dipped below it. And if I was watching content, it made it worse. Because as much as you don't use a lot of upload to consume content, it still does ping to whatever you're watching just to check where you are. And this is where the results did start to vary game to game. Things like consuming content was great. Netflix, YouTube, that stuff was amazing. Uploading my video, my one video a week got 10 times faster. But when it come down to things like Twitch, that is real time video, and things like high dependent on like your a good ping rate, the sturdy upload, there was some issues. Apex would freeze for seconds at a time and disconnect. Stream would do the same thing, it would stutter and disconnect, even at a 1500 bit rate, even though my internet's rated for a lot more. I had highs and lows at different places. I noticed that when I first started streaming, I did a lot of tests. I found that 2000, 2000 bit rate and under would be okay, except for the big dips throughout the day. So keep that in mind. It wasn't too bad, as long as you weren't streaming at a certain bit rate, and as long as you weren't doing too much while you were playing game, it would still kind of be all right. But when I first got the internet, it was extremely bad and I would get kicked a lot and it was like every five seconds I'd have an interruption. It's no problem at all when you're watching content that can load ahead of time because if you have 150 megabytes for a few seconds, that's 10 minutes of watching before you'll see a loading bar. So you have 10 minutes for the internet to get back to its normal and then load it up. But when you're playing games at a real time, it's it's not the same. You'll notice that real time. You'll notice the stutter. You'll notice it for, I had ones as long as 14 seconds. That would ruin your game. Play 14 seconds, disconnect, and send you back to the lobby. But here we are now six months later, and there has been some improvements and a lot of updates. I noticed that my connection got a bit more stable. And after a reset and a few updates to the rotor, like that did require updates that I go in and actually check for updates, I was experiencing a lot less and less of an issue. When I first got Starlink, I would have interruptions at least four or five every 10 to 20 minutes. It made FPS gaming absolutely impossible and not very fun at all. There was only a few games I could play at first. Now I only see small dips. I still get one every gaming session, but small dips once in a while, one or two in an hour of gameplay was a big change six months later. Now I find I can hold a stream for about one to five hours with only a few stutters and maybe one or two stops. The dips are different each time and I find gaming a lot better with a lot less issues in the FPS fast paced games. There's still a lot of dips. Streaming at anything over 1500 bit rate is still pretty rough. I do go live on Twitch testing this as well as record every time that I game. Every drop of my recording, every drop of my gameplay is recorded and monitored with the internet being monitored up on its own video. I have that on 24 hour recording every single time I game so that I can see and report on what it's doing. I did run four 24 hour tests so that I could get a good average of the amount of dips I get, my speeds, my highs, my lows, and the average of what it would get throughout a day. I made sure to do more than just one day so that I didn't happen to like fall on a really good day or a really bad day. And I will be doing a lot more testing of games and streaming and plan to make at least a one year video update. So if that is something that you would be interested in seeing, get subscribed so you don't miss it. Because I will be updating this. Um, this is the six month mark. I will be doing the one year. And I do plan to follow up on this here a lot because this internet is actually very important to me. And I don't have other options in 
in this area, so I'm trying to report on it the best I can as it's a main internet. In this test, I tried to be running the internet as much as I could to keep a consistent load on the internet so I could better see when it dips and so that I could get a better idea of what the highs and what the lows would look like on an average without doing a speed test every three minutes because that was inconvenient. Actually, I tried to do my testing with just speed tests at first, but doing one every three minutes for a whole entire day was actually too hard to do. But for this here, you can use internet testing tools or play games consuming content or upload and download. What I did was I set up an upload and a download first. First I uploaded the file. I made sure it had to be two terabytes or more that it would actually take a 24 hour period to download. This would ensure that the download would take at least the 24 hours for the test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of those results and some of these results like I said are going to vary. What I'll do is I'll just kind of break it down within the 24 hour period. I'm going to I have a chart here. It'll be the full 24 hours and I the consistent dips are going to be different for every single day they're just not consistent it's different every single day so that's going to make a big thing and well maybe this year will help you decide if this internet's right for you because i do play and i will show you some gameplay i'll leave about 10 minutes here at the end of gameplay so what i'll do is i'll cut out the stuttering i'll, I'll put how long it took before i got the stutter from start to stutter time and show you what the stutters look like in game so that you'll be able to judge for yourself if this is worth it to you to get is this something like do you have any other providers are you in the same position I am. I'm on DSL and this internet actually is saving me so much problems. I upload videos all the time. I stream all the time. I upload content. I consume content. I'm hoping some of this here information helps you make an educated decision on whether this internet is right for you. For me, this is a this is great internet, but if you have any other options, any stable 10 megabyte up will help you a lot if you're, it's streaming that you're doing. If it's gaming, this should be okay for gaming. When I first got it, like I said, I noticed a lot of issues with it and I could barely even play. But the last six months with all the updates and improvements that have been made to the internet, I'm very impressed. I only get one or two dips within a one to four hour period where I used to get one every five minutes. So that being said, let's go over some of the test results. This is what it looks like and the red that you see is where the game disconnects or stutters happen for longer than three seconds this was done over four different days day one there was about 14 interruptions in 24 hours this was by far the worst out of the four days i found that a small stutter was hardly noticed it had to be one that was at least more than three seconds or it just felt like a hitch not stopping the game that did happen but not too much there was six times in 24 hours and actually I find that quite fine. I found day three and four were pretty good with just only a few dips on day four and I found Starlink not that bad for gaming but for streaming on that's a different story. I did cover that as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you're interested in streaming on Starlink. I did cover that and I did do a segment on it but for gaming I think this is fine. I watched the latency as well but most of the time it hovered in between the 35 to 80 range and Usually when there was a dip, there was a noticeable latency jump or dip. It would go to zero. I got a few zeros. That was when the, the latency, it just, there was no connection. There was a connection issue. But I found the latency all over the place in between 35 and 80. Just jumping is very inconsistent. It does not stay consistent. But that's expected with satellite internet of any kind. So you can game on it, yes. Not even all that bad. It has gotten better and better over the months. I can't wait to see what the next six months of updates and improvements will bring to it. Because I find it fairly good right now. Now, and with just only a few stutters and latency that's not that bad, FPS gaming has gotten a lot better and it's bearable and I actually don't mind it now at all compared to what I used to. So for gaming on Starlink, is very capable. But that's all there is to this one here. I do hope this here gave you some insight of what the internet is going to be like for you. But definitely take into consideration all the dips. That's why I made sure I made the chart. Like this is going to be something that you need to expect when you get it. It's not going to be perfect. It's, it's satellite internet. Every single time that there's a storm or a tree branch moves in front of it, you will have small interruptions. It might not stop your game or bring it to, straight to a halt. It is going to cause a little bit of hitching. So if you can't live with that, then you'll have to find a different internet. If this is all you have available and you're wondering if you can game on it, yes, you can game on this. This is great. I have a great time on it. I game all the time. This is my only and main internet right now. I've been running this for almost six months. And like I said, when I first got it, it wasn't very good. But now I have no problem at all gaming. But that's it for me, guys. If you think I forgot or left something out, definitely leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching.